Today, I am in downtown Mill Valley. By popular request, some of you guys have been asking me to come here. My lovely wife Lizzie is joining me on the walk. Hi, everyone. And before you ask her to say a bunch of things in the video, she's not going to because she doesn't want to talk, okay? So I'm just putting that out there right now. <laughs> I can talk in person at some point if you guys meet up <laughs> with us. Yeah, but no, no comments in the video, so. No, I'm too shy. All right. You do the best job, babe. All right. So here's the deal, guys. We are going to talk about how all these expenses with owning a property right now are literally bankrupting homeowners. And this is not an exaggeration. This is really what's going on. And the first one I want to start with is property taxes, because property taxes are going up for everybody, whether you just bought or not. Obviously, the longer the longer time that has passed between when you purchase a property and now, the less your property taxes are. That's a given. But people who bought during the last two, three years basically paid all-time high prices for their homes and in turn are seeing all-time high property tax bills, which is a problem because that puts people in the poorhouse, especially if they're not expecting it. Okay, When you're not expecting a high property tax bill and you see things shoot up, that's a big problem. And it's not just for owners that live in the property and occupy it because they actually get a more favorable uh, term with their property taxes in terms of the rate you're charged and how much property taxes will go up in most areas. But the real problem comes for property investors as well. So I want to give you guys this example. Actually, one of my neighbors in Surfside, Florida, they put out this community post on the Nextdoor app and listen to what it says, okay? They said that they have a rental property over there and last year the property tax bill was $12,000 per year, which is already a lot of money. Well, they just got the new bill for next year and guess what? It's going to be $17,000 next year, guys. $5,000 increase in just one year, okay? Now think about that. That's just one expense related to this property. It has nothing to do with homeowners insurance or anything else that we're gonna get into, raising, rising utility costs, repairs, nothing else. You're talking about only property taxes going up $5,000 per year. Now, they said that the house is built in 1980. It's not a big house, and they actually charge $1,000 per month under market value to their tenants in rent because they're good tenants, they pay on time, and they're trying not to gouge them, but at the same time, they cannot continue to absorb these costs. So inevitably, they're going to have to raise the price on the rent. And that might cause their tenant to leave, right? And turnover costs a lot of money for landlords. Now you're dealing with cleaning, uh, repairs, maybe changing carpets if there are any, floors, whatever. There's a lot of things you have to do to turn over a property. And not only are you dealing with the time that the place is vacant, but you're also dealing with the expenses related to that. And these same people own another investment property, and here's what else they said. The property tax bill on that one is going from $8,500 a year to $12,000 per year. So it's just unbelievable, guys. It's completely insane, these property tax increases, and it's, it makes an investment property that used to be profitable no longer profitable. And obviously, investors are gonna get hit hardest with this because when you have an investment property, like in Florida, for example, I don't know how it works here in California, but in Florida, if you own an investment property, your property taxes are subject to go up by as much as 10% per year. And if you have a homestead exemption, you're capped at only going up 3% per year. So you don't have to worry about going up much more than that if you live in the property. But nonetheless, you're still fighting property tax increases regardless of what type of homeowner you are. And this is not just a problem that's related to Florida. This is happening all over the country. Now, when I see things like this, the property tax is going from $12,000 to uh, $17,000 in one year. I don't even know how the county is getting away with this. I don't know how they can reassess it that high and raise the taxes on somebody by that much because it's supposed to be only 10%. But that I don't know what kind of increase that is. That's like, what, 30 40% increase in one year? This should be illegal, guys, but yet this is happening to people. Even if you have the homestead exemption, right? It doesn't really matter, guys, because look at this. If you buy a property and say your property taxes when you bought it were $5,000 per year, but you paid double what the previous owner was paying for that property, your new property tax bill is still gonna be $10,000 per year, but now 
you're only limited to going up 3% per year from there. So it's not like you're not going to see a major increase in taxes if you're a new buyer. You will. But the, the cap on how much it's going to go up per year just won't be as much. And it's to the point where these crazy increases are going to cause investors to sell. I'm already seeing reports of people that live in the property, senior citizens especially, that live on fixed incomes, seeing their property taxes continuing to rise like this. They can't afford the expense and they are now being forced to sell. So this is a real concern that people are facing right now. And that is just the tip of the iceberg because there's more. So the next big one, especially in Florida, is homeowners insurance. But this is also becoming a problem here in California as well. California's just starting to see some of the problems that Florida has seen with the rising rates, people getting their policies dropped, and different areas uh, not being covered anymore, essentially, and insurers leaving the area. So it is something that people are facing here as well, but Florida's still ground zero for this problem, no doubt. It's to the point where people now are starting to basically skip out on having homeowners insurance, okay? You're having enough people say, I can't afford this or I don't wanna pay for it, so I'm just gonna self-insure. Now, just a quick disclaimer, if you have a mortgage on the property, this is not an option for you, okay? You must have insurance. If you decide to drop your insurance, your mortgage servicer will implement a policy for you that will be very expensive and hardly cover anything in your favor. It'll be more geared towards just protecting their losses in case of an event. Now, just on a national level right now, homeowners insurance premiums have gone up 20% year over year. And the average rate now is about $1,428 per year. And I would pretty much guarantee you that anybody living in California or Florida would love to have an annual premium of $1,428 a year but that's not a realistic price for basically anyone in these states. Unless you live in a very remote area where you know home prices are cheap, cost of replacement is cheap, and there's not too many natural disasters. But wealthy people in particular are starting to say now, you know what, I have enough money, I have enough resources and assets where I can afford to take the risk and I'm just gonna have no insurance. And so basically, in a total loss situation, say your house burns down, right? So you, also, you lose everything inside the house, so that's not gonna be covered because you're self-insuring, gotta replace that yourself. You also have to pay for the removal of the remains of your house, okay? And the cost to rebuild that house will be on you as well. So self-insuring isn't just about the value of your house, it's also about uh, the cost of everything, right? When it comes to rebuilding, the cost of cleaning up the mess and the cost of replacing the content. So really, I feel like when you're gonna do something like this, you need to be basically looking at, okay, what is my house worth? And double that. That's gonna be your self-insurance policy in order to really cover yourself, I would imagine. So let's take a look at a real life example of somebody who's actually foregoing uh, homeowner's insurance and this guy his name is Larry he's based out of Los Angeles California and he hasn't had homeowner's insurance in 25 years guys so this guy's way ahead of the curve in terms of you know not paying for these these crazy insurance rates okay so he says he saved roughly fifty thousand dollars on his 1100 square foot Los Angeles house by not paying for insurance all these years which sounds actually kind of low, but maybe his insurance is pretty low. He's 73 years old. He says he could afford the insurance, but he thinks the risk of wildfire or flood is very low in his neighborhood, and he's only been burglarized once in the past 40 years. So basically, his plan is that if the house were to be completely destroyed in a total loss situation, that he would move into a condo. So he, would, he wouldn't have enough money to uh, go through the scenario that we just explained where you know, he would have to rebuild the entire house, replace all its contents and all of this, but he says he would have enough money to downsize and move into a condo nearby. So I guess that's his game plan if something like this were to actually happen. So the guy's technically not in the financial position to be self-insured, but he's just taking the chance that he'll be able to move somewhere else 
if he needs to. And I had no idea about this statistic, but it turns out 12% of households in the United States don't actually have homeowner's insurance. And about half of them have annual household incomes of less than $40,000 a year, guys. So on the one hand, you could look at that and say, well, that person definitely doesn't have the income to self-insure, which I would agree with, but also they probably own a very inexpensive house and that's why they're willing to take the chance because somebody who earns $40,000 a year or less can't afford to buy an expensive home. So it wouldn't be like buying a house here in Mill Valley and having no insurance. And this is literally bankrupting people because like I said earlier, this is not an exaggeration. This is really what's going on. And it's to the point that people who are now behind on their mortgage payments even though delinquencies are still very low, a lot of people who are behind now on making their payments are attributing their late payments to the fact that their homeowner's insurance went up too high or property taxes or both, and they can't afford these increases, guys. So when someone's in a situation like that, guess what's gonna be coming next? There's only two options. You're either gonna go into foreclosure eventually, or you're gonna sell the property now, especially if there's a good amount of equity in it, and pay off your debts and get out of that property and walk away with a little bit of cash, hopefully. And this is the scenario that I think is gonna be right around the corner for many different people going into next year, because the property tax bill increases are coming for anybody that bought last year, this year. And as you can see, these increases can be astronomical. And insurance is a whole nother problem, guys. Like just all these insurance companies are looking for any excuse right now to not cover you. And if they do cover you, chances are they're gonna require you to do something with your property in the form of repairs in order to uh, get the coverage that you need. And some of those repairs can be very costly, like replacing a roof, you know, chopping down different trees. Sometimes they say you need to get rid of that tree. Like, you know, look at this huge redwood tree here in this yard, guys. If an insurance company says that's a threat, you know how much it would cost to remove a tree like that? Now they say here that mortgage lenders are factoring in the higher cost of insurance now when they're giving new home buyers approvals. But I don't really think so, guys, because I think uh, most of the time when people get an approval for a uh, mortgage, the insurance that's initially quoted there is probably insufficient. First of all, it's not enough coverage. So likely the buyer will want to increase that, which will cost more. And the other thing that cannot be accounted for when you're talking about this is the fact that many insurance companies are just dropping people. So even if you can get insurance when you first purchase the property, nowadays there's no guarantee that you can actually hang on to that policy long term, which seemed to be never really be a problem up until the last few years. But now all these insurance companies are you know, having a change of heart, guys. A lot of them are going bankrupt. A lot of them don't have the money to continue operating without significantly increasing your premiums. <laughs> now here's another example of somebody self-insuring here's a guy in florida that owns a vacation home and he believes that the total cost of replacement will be about one and a half million dollars his longtime insurance company recently sent a non-renewal notice and the only remaining insurer in the area was offering a policy of about seventeen thousand dollars a year which previously it was costing seven thousand dollars a year guys so you can see just how absurd these increases can be so what this guy did is he pretty much invested the one and a half million dollars that it would cost to rebuild the property sounds like it's in the stock market so basically his plan is to earn six percent on his one and a half million while waiting for more insurance companies to come back to florida because ultimately that's what's supposed to happen with the legislation that was passed earlier this year is designed to draw more insurance companies back into the market and eventually the more of them that come back in then the more options that there will be and the more competitive insurance pricing will be thus lowering rates at least that's the hope of what's supposed to happen uh, so far most people haven't really experienced that yet though now here's something else that one of my subscribers sent me the other day i covered 
uh, how Zillow is now in the 1% down mortgage game where they're offering new home buyers 1% down if you qualify for this. And he sent me a few more details on this that I actually was unaware of. And so check this out. One way that Zillow is also offering this is they're identifying properties that have been sitting on the market for a long time and maybe even are in disrepair or need repairs. And what they're doing is they're sending an inspector over there and the inspector comes with a huge laundry list of problems with that property and the seller a lot of times can't afford to repair all these things obviously otherwise the place wouldn't be in disrepair to begin with they pretty much pitch to the seller of this property you guys can give uh, a credit to the future home buyer of this property in the form of all these repairs and that's where they're getting all this extra money to give people a chance to put only one percent down on a property and it turns out only about 50 percent of these deals are closing because of this and even attorneys and closing agents are not wanting to perform these deals because of all the trouble associated with this so to me it's just crazy as well that zillow is going to these lengths to kind of muscle uh homeowners that are having a hard time selling and maintaining the property into giving up more money essentially towards the down payment for the next person although in reality the home buyer is probably going to be offering significantly less if the place needs a lot of repairs anyhow by the way guys i've never been to downtown mill valley before this is my first time so i have no idea where i'm going i'm just kind of like making circles around here and i tried to show a little bit of the neighborhood i didn't see anything for sale now one of my subscribers also sent me this story now i forget who it was i'm sorry but asked me to comment about it and basically here's what it says that u.s debt literally jumped 97 billion dollars in one week last week bringing the grand total of our current debt right now to 32.759 trillion basically the debt that our government is carrying is rising at exponential and unsustainable levels. And just to put in the perspective of how out of control this is right now, since 2020, when all the stimulus programs came out and the whole world got turned upside down, the US government has spent $25 trillion, okay? Our total debt right now is 32.7 trillion, guys. So literally two thirds of that spending literally came about in the last three years, which is insane. So basically the idea here is because of this massive amount of spending that we had, that there's gonna be a lot of financial repression in the future because they basically mortgaged the next 10 to 15 years of our future in just a few years, guys. And that's not gonna be good for the next decade of economic growth. But the idea here with this story is maybe the real goal of the Fed isn't so much to tame inflation, but essentially to keep the savings rate below the rate of inflation. And that's how they're actually getting all this extra money by not through raising the taxes, but by keeping inflation too high and keeping the interest rates low enough where you can't earn enough to basically out earn inflation. So it's that sneaky little tax called inflation that's simply robbing you year after year, devaluing your purchasing power, but trying to make people feel good, looking like, hey, I got a 5% raise this year, so all is well in the world, when in reality, inflation is higher than that, especially on the things that matter most, like food and housing. And the reason behind this is simple, because Congress is very unlikely to approve uh, significant tax increases, so why not just keep inflation running hot and keep the amount of interest that people can earn low enough where there's still that gap there that the government can suck the money away from us. And it's kind of a brilliant plan when you think about it and very insidious. And maybe this is the reason why we're also seeing the debt go up so high because they figured out that this is the next way that they can rob us all blind. Because what they're saying is that they don't, the Fed doesn't want inflation to go away. It wants inflation to stay above the US government's average interest rate expense. And they're trying to balance this out and do that without causing hyperinflation is essentially what they're trying to do. So I think it's definitely possible. You know, whoever sent me this asked my thoughts on it. I think anything's possible right now, guys. I wouldn't put it past them. You know, I don't trust the people who are in charge one single bit. And to say that this isn't happening, I would never 
uh, you know, say, oh no, this is a conspiracy. I think it definitely could be actually what is happening. But that's why it's more important than ever right now to make sure you are earning interest on any money that you have. Because even though, let's say the interest rate is still below the rate of inflation, you're still, it's still better than nothing, guys. And what you do with that money, with that savings, and how you invest it can make all the difference of who's going to come out ahead, even with their schemes that are going on. And it also could be one of the reasons why you still see people buying real estate, especially with cash, because they just don't trust this system right now. And with the money invested in real estate, you know, they know eventually they'll be able to uh, withstand the inflation because over the long term, real estate will appreciate. You know, we're looking at 10, 15, 20 years from now, real estate tends to go up. But obviously, in the short term, like we've been saying, things are definitely going to come down and they already are coming down in many areas, including where I'm walking at right now. So I really just wanna make sure that home buyers today are aware of what they're getting themselves into because not only are you gonna be paying you know, extremely high prices, your mortgage rate is gonna be very high as well and don't believe the lie of that you'll be able to refinance later because that very well may not be the truth for you for the next 10 to 15 years, okay? Especially if the housing market falls flat or comes down because it's definitely not gonna be continuing to go up 6% a year like all the experts are saying because it's already not happening, guys. So don't believe the lies that you're hearing with that. Definitely look at how much your expenses could potentially go up when you're gonna buy a property, particularly Homeowners insurance and property taxes. These are the two big ones right now that are literally putting people out of their houses. So make sure you know, calculate, ask your real estate agent, what are the property taxes going to be after I purchase this property that cost $600,000 that the previous owner bought for 275? What is the new property tax bill going to be? Same thing with insurance. Now that your property valuation is higher, insurance is gonna go up as well. How much is that going to cost? Find this stuff out before purchasing. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you don't wanna wait for my next video to come out, check out this one on the screen right over here. And I'll see you in the next one.